Okay, Silas is a, I'm a journalist yes. and I'm a writer. And lately I'm dedicated uh, into masculinity stuff. Mm -hmm. So I write uh, stuff to help men grow. I, I like the part that you said lately that yeah. you have dedicated yourself to masculinity stuff. Yeah. What pushed you there? Did you get a character development like this? <laughs> what happened? What happened? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been character developed. Uh -huh. But uh, for the longest time, I think I used to write a column here called The Racial Social for the Nairobian. Yes. Okay. And uh, it was dedicated to men. Then I retired from the column. I thought like I'd said everything that uh, I should have said. Then after like six months, I realized there, there was so much to say. Mm. And then I just resumed writing the memos now on Facebook. And yes. that's how I became the memo man. Yes, the yeah. memo man. Yeah. Mr. Masculinity himself. Let's yeah. get into your memos. And I hear he's written about uh, almost 100 right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear... This morning, you're at uh, memo 135. Oh, wow. Oh, so I'm even back. I, I'm, I need to catch up on your memos. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a uh, part two of your memos. Yeah. I'm going to just drive in into the memos because that is why I want to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to plug into this conversation through our social media handles, Spice from KE on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Of course, you can stream live and see this particular gentleman and be part of the show. That is www.spicefm.co.ke. If you have any questions today, we have this gentleman who's going to answer. Part two of the memos that you started writing, mm -hmm. uh, there are a few memos that have caught our eye. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking you questions about that, and so will the shy mistress. Mm -hmm. Something you talked about on part two memos the, uh, on life with women. Yeah. Reminders of men. Basic life of women. What did you mean by like the 12 reminders? What are these 12 reminders you want men to remind themselves when it comes to men and women? The 12 reminders that men, uh, basically, you know, for a generation, if I can just give a small yeah. background. Yes. Uh, when you grew up, especially if you're from a middle class family, uh, you went to school. By the time you are a, a teenager, you're in boarding school, then high school in boarding school, then you go to campus. And there are certain things that um, we were never taught. Like, we don't know how to deal with women. Like, uh, very few men understand the female nature. Yes. And that's why now we come in out to remind men certain things about women. What For do you example, want us to, what do you want to remind them? Women are hypergamous. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, hypergamy is not like a bad thing. Though it's lately not. it has like a negative connotation. But it's men who are making it look negative, if you think about it. It, it, it has taken a different uh, turn, especially with modern women. Explain. <laughs> uh, in the past, I forgot I had like a ceiling. You just needed a man who was just ambitious and had some sense of purpose. Uh, but lately, most of the women, they just want men who are ready. We don't have like uh, women who want to work and grow with a man. Because some of you, this potential is not being seen. <laughs> and if what is work and work with a man? Yeah. What's that? They want you to start from the just, bottom. Just, just grow with a man. like uh, Grow at 35. Yeah. Huh? So we grow at together at 35 years. You have years. to start early because as you grow older, you're dating and mating choices, they start, it starts to look like a, a mtumba market. <laughs> Silas, I want to plug in on what uh, Karigo has said. Yeah. And I like that they say the hypergamy is not a bad thing. Yeah. And you're coming from a place where you believe that women or our older women used to grow with the men yeah but times have changed and yes. i like the fact that you mentioned that yeah, times have. have changed we have the modern man we have the modern woman mm -hmm. now we have women who are not so lucky to get boyfriends or get married at the 20s mm -hmm. so at 35 or 36 this girl has really start, started her life with one room mm -hmm. or an sq and i'll give an example of karigo mm -hmm. how yeah. she started her life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now where she is is not where she was 10 years ago. Absolutely. Mm. And in that 10 years ago, now she has something to her name. Yeah. She can hire, she has a ride, she has utensils, she has this. Mm -hmm. So when you're telling Carigo to go and meet someone and yeah. date yeah. someone who wants them to start afresh yeah. from one room, don't you think that's an injustice to this girl or to this woman? Or to, so, so it's not my fault that you're not at the same par. Yeah. Mm. So you cannot blame Carigo mm -hmm. for looking for someone who is almost at par with her or higher. Mm -hmm. So this woman who is at a certain age, we will, will not go and start from fresh. And I'm Absolutely. going to give myself an example. Where I am right now, I'm sorry, I'm not starting life with you. And that's a I basic. And I've that's a basic. where I am. Yeah. Let us meet somewhere. And yeah. that just come, come with something more. And that yeah. just, that's a basic in life, with life, depending on which level you are at. Basically, that's what we're telling young men. For example, in my first volume of memos, yes. one of the, like the first memo I ever wrote, I was telling men to delay marrying until they are much older uh, and much more stable. Yes. And uh, so most young men don't understand how these things work. Because you'll get your first job and the first thing you think, 
you it's are the one. I don't, wh- wh- why do men think like that? That's how we were conditioned. It's now that we're trying to unlearn these things. And that uh, there was no one to teach us these things. So some of us maybe married very early and then you got burnt. Yes. And now we've had learned these things and we're teaching these things to young men. So f- I like the example you've given. These men who have uh, uh, married early, now they got burnt, they don't have. And in fact, before the break, we were talking about someone we all knew mm. uh, that initially he was uh, attached to someone and now he's not. Mm. Yeah. So such a man, for example, now he meets another person. Do you, does that level of hypergamy, he wants to start afresh again or you look for someone who's younger? No, right now we are trying to, of course for men you will always go for someone who's younger. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the ones who go for those ones who are older because mm. you, you also have a memo on that. Carigo, yeah. what is In that fact, memo? the memo is young man, go slow on those. those older women. I see you're shocked. We read your memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know <laughs> them. We, we, yeah, the faster hundred. Yeah. We know. <laughs> no, no, because um, it never works. Why? The way, the way we are designed, whether you believe in evolution or in the Bible, women only marry or mate upwards. Okay. So if you want to date an older woman, we have a few exceptions here and there, but really does it work? Because even for a woman, this young man will become a piece of work. You can't control him and uh, you want maybe to control and regulate the way he operates and why uh, why is that always the assumption why is it that assumption. maybe she'll become submissive silas no we have a An couple older of woman submits to a younger, yes, to a younger that's man the man of the house duchess what about the <laughs> gospel couple that I recently got there. married are we trying to say that she does not submit to him that's an exception to the rule and we need to look at the money that she has there are other factors so the man will try and toe the line but uh, under normal but also the man has some money, has some money. Don't you think so? Uh, compared to what the woman has, <laughs> I doubt. Uh, but th- that's an exception. But yes. rarely does it work. Like an older woman uh, with a younger woman, it doesn't work. It also stunts the man. The man can't grow. Because so in your memo, you do not uh, recommend for a young man to settle with a young, uh, an older woman? To s- no, no, no. I don't recommend at all. It stunts the man. And I've seen how these young men are kicked out. Women are very ruthless when they kick out these young men. You know, that's the second time. You told me before we started the show, but that was private. Why do you feel women are ruthless? Yeah, like what well, happened? the second time I've heard you say that. That's uh, when we were off air now. No, Silas. No. What's, what's the notion? Silas. Being ruthless. And be, be, be honest. Be honest. No, 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 no. Honestly, like I'm being honest. Eh? And this is being a very ruthless safe again space. Mm-hmm. is not a bad thing because women, you have so many responsibilities. Mm-hmm. You can't afford to have a loafer or a joker in the house because there's so much uh, at, at stake here. There are kids. There's a future that has to be worked on. So... Like a man has to really be very lazy for him to go after an older woman. Like <laughs> unapata zenye, we may lay so that you want something that is ready. Unataka zile zimeundwa. Because for men, we have to build our own value. <laughs> so for men, repeat that statement again. For men, you have to. We have to build our own value. Okay. So if oh there's a, a rich woman somewhere, and uh, I'll understand for maybe it's just a short term affair, mm. that's uh, something else. If it's a phase. But for for marriage, it really works. And it leaves those men extremely very miserable. Because you get very comfortable in a house. And then one day this woman just gets tired and she kicks you out. Why does it have to be her house? What if it is his house? And what if he's actually on the same level with her financially? And she doesn't want kids, he doesn't want kids, and life is going on. Are you trying to paint a picture of something? Yes, no. because Duchess... She's been arguing about that. We cannot live in a world <laughs> whereby we assume that at if somebody... My uncle married a younger woman. Yeah. I mean, sorry, an older woman. Yeah. My uncle was Cameroonian. My Auntie is from Nyeri. Mm-hmm. He married my auntie, Tata Joki, and she what was, was the age older, like above five, six years. That's, and that's the three. That's, that's almost bad. Bad. And that's like in the 60s, in but the those 70s. those are almost years. We're talking about 20, it's 15, about a large, yeah, 14, a large 14, like 10, 15 10, years. Yeah, 10 to yeah. plus 10 now, that becomes a bit... Uh, between six, you're almost peers, I think. Yeah, five, between six, six yeah, six, seven. That's, but uh, still, that more often range. than not, yeah. as far as Silas mr masculinity is concerned older women is a trap regardless of the age or is there a cap so now we put a cap yeah it has to be within a certain range but generally for a man i think you should always marry someone at your age or or younger so regardless regardless yeah 
even will, if there will always be a few exceptions but you know we, in life we can't bank uh, we can't go with exceptions <laughs> if you're just joining in this is spice of <laughs> fam the show is the adults in the room i'd like you to plug into this conversation and tell a friend to tell a friend we are having mr silence nyanchwani he's an author a journalist and he's been named mr memos and his memos to lean towards masculinity empowering this man educating men on those things that you don't want to talk about so today we are having a conversation with him if you have a question a query feel free to do so through our whatsapp line 0110288162 or you can plug in on our socials spice fmke on instagram facebook and twitter there's a question of one of your members that was put on the social media <laughs> the amount of traction it has my god stay tuned we'll be right back in the room we're having a discussion that i hear is causing ripples causing fires in different circles there's something called i, I, I like when sometimes people are uncomfortable because we need to have this conversation uh with you as the man with you as silas and most importantly and learning and also opening my mind to other things so if you're just joining in we are the adults in the room, and today's adults are the shy mistress, who's also known as Kariga Gatere, I, the Duchess of Ikolomani, and of course, Mr. Silas Nyanchwani. Nyanchwani is an author and a journalist, and most importantly, he said it's something that has been very trendy in the last couple of weeks and months. He's calling himself the members. And these members are more leaned on the masculine uh, movement. Can I call it like that? Yeah. The masculine movement. Masculinity. The masculinity uh, movement. Yeah, the masculinity movement. He has decided to make men aware. He has decided to open eyes of men. And today, as you're opening eyes for men, we're also going to be having questions for you. Yeah. Now, part of the memos that you have, one of them reads, 16 nasty tactics women use to win arguments and avoid accountability. You're not the, the first man who says this. Yeah. I know of a gentleman who's a friend who runs a YouTube channel. Mm. He is of the opinion women are very tactful and we play a lot of mind games when it comes to arguments. And this is why men would always lean on saying, for the sake of peace, yeah. let, let her have her way. So what are these 16 tactics, if you can give us a brief of it? And why do you think that women never want to fight fair? Because I think, I believe there are people out here who fight fair. But when I was reading these memoirs and reading the feedback that came from it, men seem to believe it. And women, I want you to hear about these 16 tactics. Hmm. If you've been doing them, you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, basically, that memo was targeting women online. Yes. Because at the moment, it's uh, almost impossible to have a... Uh, a positive conversation between men and women because we are trading accusations. Women say this, men say that. But don't you but think it's some uh, level of maturity or immaturity? Yeah, there is that. Because if you think about it, mm -hmm. some of the wars I see online, it's not worth it. It's just that people, uh, like, uh, uh, people, uh, instead of maybe we are fighting, yeah. instead of us or we are having a difference of opinion, you sharing, I share, you. Kenyans start insulting each other. And we their mothers personal. and fathers. We, we go crass. Mm. We don't talk about issues. And also men and women online, when it comes to serious matters, I have seen them, instead of dealing with the matter, we become all feminists. Yeah. We become all masculinity. This is why you didn't get that job on merit. Who did you sleep with? Okay. Mm. That is when, you, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Mm. So mm. I feel it's some level of immaturity, but that's me saying. But what are these tactics? This, the argument was that uh, women don't like accountability because they have lived in a world where they didn't have to be accountable. But now we are in a situation where women are forced to be accountable. So when we come online to explain that men are going through, for example, let's say men are going through depression uh, or there is abuse in marriage, men uh -huh. are also abused, women also come and counter that uh, oh also women are abused really so remember as a man i'm not saying that women, women are not abused we're saying okay women are abused He's right, by the now as men also here is our story so the daughter one to listen to that yes so when you try to say for example like women cheat in marriage they also oh, men have been cheating all along so it's it like becomes invalidate or yeah, we're, 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 we're always invalidating you're always minimizing the argument and uh, when we are complete, completely completely cornered you start stuff like oh, so I know about some judiciary, go marry each other, you know, like uh, 
most women, especially the learned type, the ones in online we call uh, mm. the Good English Battalion. Oh, they're called like that. The good we, we call them that, the, the Good, good English, English Battalion. Yeah, I think I know some of they them. Are, they're, they're in that Good English Battalion. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. are you looking at They me? are <laughs> constantly attacking us mm -hmm. for just saying what's there, like what's there, what is provable, you know, what's verifiable. So they minimize, they, they are constantly countering those arguments. But in the end, it's always, uh, women always want to come out as either victims or extremely innocent. So there's no way they want to understand where that men are going through some pain, men are going through some pressure or even depression. Here's the thing. I do agree that I have seen what you are talking about yeah. online, that sometimes when men come out to say something, their stories are invalidated, which is very wrong. Mm. And I always believe that the same way women can be harassed, men could be harassed. Yeah. However, I feel women, and I might sound like I'm defending women anyway, I'm a woman. I feel as a duchess of equal money, women are coming from a point of where they learned from the best. Yeah. And now they are playing defense. Mm -hmm. So when that conversation starts and they feel they are being beaten, they're just trying to defend themselves yeah. or defend a sister. Mm -hmm. Not more so them, mm -hmm. but defend that particular sister. Yeah. Because true to the world, for the very long time, we've and even today we're having a conversation of someone who really likes your work, and the person said this, and I quote mm -hmm. Mr. Mysterious, mm -hmm. that women, what, uh, it's like, we don't know how to control ourselves somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we, and it's, it's okay. We are the weaker sex. I don't refuse. And when it comes to gender roles, but yeah, for me, me, I'm weak. But they, you'll, you'll have to climb up. Me, I don't refuse. I'm the weaker sex. But there are certain things that I am better than you. And there are certain things that you're better than me. I've agreed that we cannot all be equal. But we, have a, we can look for equitable distribution of resources, equitable measures in certain avenues, but everyone has to stick to their gender roles. Now, exactly. when it comes to that angle, I feel that's why women defend themselves because they're coming from a place where for a very long time, they were beaten down, they were demonized, and the, the man was superior. So would you look at it as a point of just playing defense or them just trying to sustain an argument? That's, that's, that's a very big lie that uh, has been perpetrated that women had it uh, worse or women had it... Uh, Why do you say that? It's a lie because if you look uh, at history, society is always advanced and men and women are going through the same things but differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the notion or the idea that uh, women were always placed under men... It's a lie. You think so? It, it's, it's a lie Give that... Give me an example. Uh, that is taught in the university under uh, feminism or uh, that kind of start. Uh, Silas, kind of stuff. which country are you in? Aren't we the same country that we started the movement of the girl child, educating the girl child? Because in some communities in Kenya, you know it, I know it, uh, Karigo knows it. Yeah. We were having young ladies being married off early in some communities. And I can say even in my community long time ago, if I look at some of my aunties, my my fathers and their brothers and their, you know, the elder ones, were taken to school and these girls were not. Yeah. So when you tell me it's a lie, you I'm know, wondering you, 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 you which need, history are you looking you, you, at? You, you need to look at the... We just started having schools 50 years ago. Uh -huh. and, uh, My relatives are older. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm so, saying when you, yeah, so when you're saying it's a lie, which lie? It, it, it's a lie in the sense we talk because there's no historical context to how people used to live. You know, right now, like for the two of you, um, you've greatly benefited eh? from the advancement that human beings have made. We've built cities, we've built uh, schools, you know. Schools are to come so that we can go to school. And, uh, but schools uh, have always been there. Schools. In Kenya, when did Lots you start having schools? We're talking about no. stuff that has yes. happened in under the last 100 years. And as a society grows, as the economy grows, okay. opportunities open up yes. to everyone. Yes. It's not like, um, I know, of course, in the beginning, men were slightly advantaged, but for a reason. It wasn't uh, like uh, it was because like men had some some ulterior motives. They were motives. given opportunity more than the ladies. True? They were given opportunities. Yeah, and then at some point, some communities and actually let let me give credit to the Moy era. Yeah. In some communities were enlightened mm -hmm. and there were programs and sponsorships exactly. you know about it know about that, that gave girls an opportunity exactly. and if we are very careful i believe each now they're called counties yeah each county has a school that's called moi girls this mm. moi girls this you that's remember true, that yeah. era that's true, yeah. because we were trying to empower the girl because at that particular time women were put for, uh, put backwards now let me remove about of the school look at the current corporate society and i will start with an example of standard group exco count the women who are there 
Mm. Count the men who are there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you, like, I know several excos, mm. several boards people yeah. sit in. Mm -hmm. The number of women and the number of men. Yeah. So when you tell me that we uh, men are disadvantageous, where is it coming from? No, it's not we haven't reached the way you guys it's, are. It's not that um, men, women are disadvantaged and men are advantaged. As time grows, uh, women will get there because most of these things are about merit. Yes. And uh, I, you can't see. And, and in, in, what in do the, you in, mean in it's about ten years, merit? Uh, ten years, for example, how many governors did we elect in 2013? And you see After the change? five years, you see. Yeah. So we had growth, to growth is something that is continuous. True. Yeah. So in Kenya, for example, if you look at it from a tribal angle, you'll, you'll find like guys from central Kenya because they had the colonial privilege. Yes. They got tired. Then yes. say someone in Trukana. True. You see, so it's better to look at it that way than to say that uh, men had some conspiracy to keep women down. True. No, there's no conspiracy. So, we're just growing. And I'm saying maybe my daughter, for example, she lived in a completely different world from the one that we're living. Our parents lived in a completely different world. Yeah. So, I find it like uh, misleading mm -hmm. to say that in the past women were treated wrongly because I grew up in the village and I don't think whether my father treated my mother. In a wrong way, my grandfather had something against my grandmother. That I, was a world that they lived in. Uh, and as things get better, people adopt. So you know. that that, uh, that being treated that boys went to school and girls didn't, for you that is not wrong? No, for him it's normal. No, it's not normal. It was the norm. It was the that, norm. And that's what was happening then. And because the school It was the norm come, at that time. Yeah, women were still domesticated and they were domesticated for a reason. Mm -hmm. and, Which uh, is? Men were the ones who were going to work. And uh, at the moment, women were, work, you know, we're hunters and gatherers, like women working at home, and men used to go out and hunt. So, women just joined the workforce in the 70s, even in America, like women joined the workforce in the 70s, in the True. 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't join. And that's join, when we started our movements. And uh, you see, they didn't join there because of feminism, they joined there because of capitalism. And, you know, the, 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 corp, the big corporate, they needed cheap access to labor yes so what happens you bring everyone on board so that labor can be cheap so yes. that profits can can go up and then you see now the introduction of the con contraception uh we're talking about uh, something like uh, abortion rights mm -hmm. so that's what now liberates the woman to get into the corporate world so <laughs> this thing is not about the movement or anything it's just how human beings advance from one civilization to the next to the other if you join the conversation, we are the adults in the <laughs> room. Yes, I've seen some of your calls. Yes, Allow me to be on the top of the hour. Yeah. As we're talking That's about the memos, <laughs> as we're talking about the memos, I beg to differ on that. Yeah. I, I yes. get to, no, I beg to differ on that. As I said, I don't think anyone is treated unfair. I don't think men are being treated no, unfairly they're at this not. age. Nobody's no. treated. Yes, it's just a new norm. You see that norm that we have. And, and I don't think men have ever actually been treated badly because men have always been put ahead. It's the girl child. In the recent, what, 80s, that when we've made the choice to put the girl child ahead, it's always been the men ahead. Do you watch um, this HBO, uh, Lord of, oh no, uh, Game, of the the Game of Thrones, another sequel that's coming? Yeah. Who, can, who is being chosen to get the throne? A man. But there are women. There's the daughter. There's the cousin. There's the niece. There's the auntie. But... This man has to get an heir to the throne, which is a man. Difference. Nobody else. <laughs> would you like so, to respond before I mean, this break? Yeah. When, when you say that... I, the I, I would love to respond to that because societies are uh, organized differently. Yes. Uh, the British monarch, for example, the queen has been the one who has been reigning there for the last almost oh 60 God. or so years. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, maybe she's not uh, doing very well at the moment. Yes. If she dies, and the you're following that story, yes, yeah. Yeah. you're really following I'm it. I'm really following the story, but societies are organized differently. It's not like uh, when a man is at the top, uh, a woman is not at the top. If you have a uh, president root at the top, Rachel is right there. You know, it's not like uh, that's how societies work. <laughs> if you yeah. join the conversation, we are the adults in the room as we take a break. I would like us to also take a moment of silence for Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away this evening. From Ashi. Buckingham Palace, it mm. was announced. Mm -hmm. Actually, she passed away around uh, an hour ago, but we needed confirmation on it. Mm. And the confirmation has come through from the Buckingham Palace. Oh. So we're saying, Paul is the royal family, to the Brits and to everyone who listens to it. Uh, let's just give, let's give her some Diana Taylor, Diana Taylor. 
as we say, rest in peace, Queen. And yes, you have served and served well. And I know the likes of Mr. Nyanchwani are happy that a man will be taking over. No. <laughs> Spice. We are having a conversation with Mr. Silas Nyanchwani. And the conversation today, I know I've seen a lot of traction online. If you're paying attention, that is one of his memos. Not the topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they know the memo that is online is causing ripples and fires. But yes, we're talking about memos. And we're talking about memo number two, uh, part two, about where you're talking about um, the life of men and how they associate with women. And later on, we're going to be talking about how men are... Uh, Seguing to marriage and all that. But there's something that I have seen in one of your memos that I want you just to give me a brief about it and why you wrote it. And the reason I'm asking this question is no day passes when God gives me breath and I sit on this chair. A man doesn't call and say how a woman has done him dirty. A man doesn't call. A man calls and tells us, Ali Patio character development. And I know I'm not going to defend. I like the part that you said when we talk about men, women say even us, no. I've had men complain about some of the things women have done to them. I've had men blame majority of their problems to what women have done to them. And in your memo, and I quote, 99% of your problems have nothing to do with a woman. And mm. that is you telling to a man, why did you say that? And there are men out there who don't believe that. No, I realize when you write this uh, masculinity stuff, the feedback we get when you go to the comments, men are constantly blaming women mm. yes. for, for some of the problems they have. It's true some of the problems that men go through are caused by women. But then when you do a proper analysis of these problems, uh, a woman generally has nothing to do with it. But when it's you say, because, I can go a moment, let's just, just let's because, silence. Uh -huh. because of the poor choices that we make as men. So you'll find that maybe... Uh, I married the wrong woman and uh, she did me wrong. Now as a man, I'm not able to go back and think like maybe I got a wrong partner. You know that uh, women are necessarily uh, bad people. So you'll find that uh, a man who stays on his purpose, a man who concentrates on his work, you know, is on his mission, uh, women cannot be a distraction. And the, in the manosphere, uh, we say that a I woman, like that. <laughs> a mm. woman should only be a compliment in your life she should not be the main like your main mission uh, my friend jacob balliet uh, in his book he talks he talks about what he call the mental point of origin men who try to make like their wife their kids their family uh, their point of uh, concentration sometimes they fail because your family whether your wife or your kids when you fail to meet the expectations they can abandon you they can desert you so men who have done everything right for their families and they are deserted, you find that uh, now they start blaming women and blaming everyone else, but not knowing that uh, there the, are the things they would have done differently uh, for them not to find themselves in such a situation. And then we just want to have men to develop some healthy habits whereby they can do some bit of self-introspection intro, introspection to understand if you find yourself in a mess, how do you get out of it? You, d you don't stay in and blame women. You just work out and get out of it. Whether women are served to character development, you don't want to stay on that for, for long. I want you uh, to hold that thought yeah, because sure. I want to come back on those healthy habits. Yeah. And I'd like you to share with the men so that we don't have them every other moment talking about they were done, dirty, done, bad. Yeah, sure. Thanks. The show is the adults in the room. It's exactly nine o'clock, and we're having a conversation with Mr. Silas Nyanchwani. He's an author, a journalist, and they're on it. Um, Wanaume in some certain circles, mm. and he's been writing memos. Some of these memos caught my eye, and of course, you know the social street when something is trending, they call it the algorithm. It came across as, and I was like, I would like to hear from him. Now, before we went to the break, we were talking about one of your memos that you've written that to men, telling men 99% of your problems has nothing to do with women. And I like how you have articulated that because you're trying to tell men introspect. And you were there telling us, what are these habits that men who are blaming women of these problems need to do? And secondly, you talked about when a man lacks purpose or doesn't have a clear purpose, that is when he'll blame, uh, uh, he'll blame the women. Please continue from there. 
the main the main issue is uh, what we call in the manosphere as I've said uh, the mental point of origin. Yes. For for the longest time when we're growing up, we are told that uh, once you get a you get a job, you marry and your family becomes your point of focus. Priority. Which uh, which is a good <laughs> thing. It should be. But then you realize men who prioritize their family and uh, their wives uh, and then they forget about their mission, mm. you can easily be distracted. Yes. Uh, women, for all their benefits, sometimes they can really bring chaos into a man's life. <laughs> in what sense? And, uh, in what sense? Yeah, in what sense? What is this you chaos know, that we bring in? You know, he says things about women with so much finality. <laughs> like, there's no negotiation, there's no coming no, I'm in. But that's his opinion. I'm like, I, yo. I, that's what asking you. That's I what have opinion. to He's insist, allowed, like, if you marry the to. wrong woman. Okay. Because uh, for a man, you, you need uh, a woman, like, was praying for you, supporting you in your mission, in your goals. But sometimes not all women are like that. The women, uh, they are not really, their goal in life is not like a marriage. But sometimes along the way, they might find themselves married. And but then as a man. Is that? Huh? Let's, let's start by that. Yeah. Now that you're talking about 99%, whose fault is that, that a man has paired with a woman who's not praying for him? Whose fault is that? Uh, it's a man's fault. <laughs> yes. Thank but it will be unfair to say that to put all the blame on him. First of all, you have, you have to understand the societal pressure that uh, makes men, for example, to marry at an early age mm -hmm. when, he's, uh, when he's not wise, when he's not... So uh, we're also going to give it pressure, maybe family or what is happening yeah, around him. Yeah, there's family, there's pressure. And you know, most of the time, our first marriage is married for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, a man may be the firstborn in their family and he's under so much pressure. You have to give us grandchildren, you know. Uh, sometimes for women, the, the main reason sometimes women marry the wrong men is for economic reasons. Maybe she has some financial needs and for women they have that option that they can cash in into marriage. And then you end up marrying someone who's not desirable. And then a few, after a few years, you want out now, you are stable. You know, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. So both men and women, we can marry for the wrong reasons. True. Yeah. So it means that if you marry... So both of us are at fault out there. Can we say that? Yeah. Both fault. genders are at fault both, because... Yeah some of us got married or got attached to wrong people yeah mm -hmm. yeah that, that's true or maybe she got pregnant and then you thought like okay i can take her in you know yeah but it's not like the main it's not mm -hmm. like it's not an ideal way to start marriage and when you're in then rather than work on the things that uh to make it work now you start you realize that you are drifting apart mm. now for men uh, how they are normally affected is that we invest a lot uh, during the first years of marriage like the first 10 years uh, the financial investment, especially the man puts into a marriage, is really, really, really huge. And then you realize after a man loses his job, or if he's a businessman, the business goes down, then you find now maybe he's being dumped, he's being, uh, he's being abandoned. Now that's when now men start blaming women or they start becoming bitter and all that. But all along they didn't know that all the sacrifices that they were making... Um, for women, like those, for some women, <laughs> I have to no, check myself. Elizabeth. For some women, these sacrifices. <laughs> no, 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 do this. Be comfortable, just say it as you feel. Oh yes, God. she, at, at a pona, at a pona. Oh can go pona. Because even when there's, I talk, I will talk with my finality. There's a, there's yes, a, so I would like you to also do the same. Don't worry about there's it. There's a French anthropologist called uh, Brifold who say that, um, he's actually explained that theory of hypergamy. Yes. Like for women, all the sacrifices a man you make. If I make a good sacrifice today, it's invalid tomorrow. Uh, that's how it works, like. Yes. So that's why we find like most men are bitter. Like I did this, I took her to school, then she dumped me. I paid her through college. I did A, B, C, D. You know. Yeah. So we try to tell men like all these sacrifices that we're making. Yeah. They mean nothing. Toman. So Silas. Yeah. Now that we are telling men all these sacrifices they're making to a woman are not worth it. Yeah. Can you tell men why their wives brought? boyfriend is probably getting a, a better deal that, than uh, him. No, uh, before you get to that, my mom, please, before yeah. we get to that, my mom, we need to finish on this. Uh -huh. You've talked about the sacrifices that make, uh, uh, men make and you were talking about uh, some of the statements this philosopher or this particular author was yeah, making reforts, yeah. Yeah, uh, on hypergamy. I do agree with them and I always say that uh, there's this thing women make fun about that twenty bon when you do something, you've earned 10 bonga points or one bonga point. But when you do something wrong, it, like, it erases what it you've done good. Yeah. Now, it comes from a place where women are coming from how they were natured or nurtured. Absolutely. It's how we are wired. Yeah. That for us, 
you could do something good, but that one thing can erase what you did good the yeah. whole day. Now, men, you compartmentalize your thoughts yeah. and you do it a bit differently. Mm. So for you, you'll be like, okay, she did something in the morning. So even if she's faulted me, I will, I will, I can look, uh, I can erase that. I can forgive her. So now that we all know that we are wired different, now that we all know that be between our minds, our gender roles, why would a man feel that the sacrifices he makes are invalid? Remember, you're coming from a place where you're telling me, this is how you've been programmed. This is how we have been brought up. Men need to do this. Your family is your priority. Your children are your priority. Now, if you're not able to fulfill certain needs in that family don't you think this woman is going to try and look for elsewhere I, am i making sense yeah, yeah. based on how we are wired because yeah. i need you are supposed to pay school fees mm -hmm. you're supposed to provide our rent yeah. and do abc you have been doing it as my husband as we uh, i'm going to let's say husband sure. as my husband now you have reached a point that you can remember you paired with the wrong person you did not check those characteristics now this person because women are yes, very good at hiding them no, say, no let's not say women we all send representatives <laughs> yeah yeah we all okay. send representatives sure, sure. true we all send representatives yeah. mm -hmm. now here we are you know that barbara married you for economic reasons economically you're not able to meet that mm -hmm. so now she has gone economically to look for where her children are going to get the next meal so now that you know that, don't you think men need to reprogram themselves as they work hard, as men would say, I am working for this because you already know this woman is with you for this reason. Absolutely. Is it possible for us, to, like the way asked, and it's wrong for me to say this, and uh, I, I know I'll, I, I can get a beating from this from other people, but we're at a phase where we've understood that men are polygamous in nature and in nature. Maybe not all, but some. You know, we know that very few very few very few. thank you for saying that very few and it's come from a man so as we've accepted that are you able to accept that when a woman you're dating you're marrying comes to you you're supposed to be doing the five p's perform protect you know all those p's because you're the man and stop thinking that when you don't perform that she's going to be smiling with you that's what we're basically telling men but there's something that we had on top yes when you're doing all the five P's, the, pro the, the protection, pro performance, performance, provide. And all that, uh, those things, you should also do them to yourself. Okay. Because sometimes we do them for, for the kids and yeah. for the wives. Okay. And then we forget ourselves. You really don't know, like most married men, sometimes they can't even afford a shirt. Mm. I agree. Even a pair of shoes. Yes, and, they're not uh, selfish. They don't love themselves. They, they don't love them. It's not like they don't love themselves. That men, f w from the time we are young, we are conditioned to be there for others, like to provide for others. You know. Yeah. And uh, like there's something I was thinking that uh, a woman, for example, earns like almost half a million, even a million shillings. In her village, she's not very useful because uh, uh, someone someone who works in industry and earns maybe like 50,000 yes it does more for the village than a woman who even earns a million like that's how things are i beg to differ and let me tell you why i beg to differ uh, by the way there's a gentleman who has called nine times i'll pick your call joseph yeah, uh, i've seen you yeah. uh, but let me tell you they say give a woman an income and she'll fill the nation you've heard that saying and give a man you know, you know that saying in our cultures, I in know our yes, you get the same thing like uh, yes. when you teach a girl. You yes, you've taught you've taught a whole village. Some of the most horrible lies that have been you've, fed all over. You know the why years. we don't think as lies? Yeah. I, I have seen it in my extended family, not all of them, yeah. but I've seen our parents, mm -hmm. and I want to be challenged today. I'm telling you, I want to be challenged. Go to a socials and call those who have brothers, those who have sisters, out of a family that has a man. Very maybe you have five men and you have two girls. You can find only two men are helping their parents, but the girls are going over on the board. Mm -hmm. I was accused by my in-laws of loving my parents more. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to tell, they're like, you're always visiting your parents. You're always, you get, and I'm thinking like, but they're my parents. Absolutely. And I was wondering, okay, why don't your sons do that? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So when you, when we talk about that particular, I feel like when, if you empower a woman, you've empowered a whole chain. But if you empower a man, you, you have only empowered his family. Because he becomes what you were saying. He will take care of his own. He will take care of his people, but not take care of the others. Does that make sense? It's actually the reverse. Not, uh, it's mm. the reverse. Please enlighten me on that. Uh, women in their nature is that you look after yourself first and then your children. And then your parents like in, in a very nuclear way. 
like I'm not saying like women don't help or women are uh, selfish. Like is, your selflessness is uh, limited, like it's narrow. But for men, it's a uh, you'll find like. Um, Do you know there are men? Yeah. Who don't even help their parents. That's true. But there are women who are married, and they go out of their way to find out how their parents are. The yeah, men have to sure. be reminded. A woman doesn't have to be reminded unless there's something wrong, unless they're estranged or there's a disconnect. The, the point here is, uh, a man will tell you, "Unajua bibi yangu, watu wangu, eh, watoto wangu." The point here is uh, that women make sacrifices. There's no doubt about that. Yes. But their sacrifices are, uh, like, let me say, limited or inward, including not, child not, not, birth. Not, not, not like uh, including childbirth. It's like the greatest sacrifice that uh, women make, and uh, or is it in your language the only sacrifice no, that women the, no, make? No, women are selfless. That's yeah. true. Yeah, but I'm saying that you find that uh, because because of like taking care of children, that's a very big responsibility. Uh, taking care of your parents, that's a very big responsibility. But I'm saying for men, like the way we are trained, eh, is that now you we like we work for everyone, like. If, for example, my cousin called me from the village and told me that uh, he's stuck with something, I'll be more obliged to do something for, for him than my sister will be obliged. And uh, if, you want to, if you want to see how practically, just go to all the funeral uh, WhatsApp groups that are arranging. And I have see, one that is going on. I and uh, just you. do an analysis and see During the break, I'll give you who's contributing. The we most. have women. Unless they In the village. I'm, I'm talking about it, the, the village one. I'm okay. talking about the one. Uh, oh, okay. Like, just go to the village WhatsApp group. It will group. be the men. In the village, it will be, be the men. men. Because uh, they have the income. Think about it. Women have the income too. If anything... I am tilling the land, but when I come back, who sells my maize? The my man. Jose. Yeah. Which part of Kenya is that? Western. <laughs> I'm Even not who takes the milk to the dairy mm. to be I'll, bought yeah. in the morning, it's the man. Let yeah. me pick this call. This gentleman sure. has called 13 times. Mm -hmm. Hello, Spice. Uh, hello. Hi. Spice. Baba. Na Karigo na Mgeni. Hi. Hello, what is your question or what's the comment you have? Okay, about my comment, Namba Mgeni has idea who Madam Wetu Karigo. I want to differ with Karigo. What Karigo is saying, I remember there is a time I talk about um, how what discourages us men, like men or boys, discourage us to marry. It is because of such kind of opinion that like Karigo amesema na penda kudiva na yeye kwa sababu amesema vitu mingi be specific like like economic they ladies come after economic economic yani kama mtu anakuja after something behind the scene you are not okay let me support the point that i was saying the other time we are lacking the ladies of Kitambo yani Kitambo Mwanamuke nge kupenda tu venye huko, not for economic or they come just for love, muta me kupenda tu venye huko, ata kama ngue meraruko, umetoka kwa fundi, umetoka, umetoka kwa mujengo. She just loves you the way you are, not for economic. Okay, thank you for that, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I, I have not finished, I'm sorry. Proceed. That's why I was saying, we need Sai. We are going to a moment where if men will not mafika mali paka men will not marry in future because ladies of now they have put their demands instead of love, love, love or marriage. And you do not afford a real marriage. It is the ladies of now they are not seeking real marriage. They are after something. Mume pata watoto watatu lakini mutu ajui kwamba umachishwa kazi. But he's under pressure. Unapata uko naenda kutafuta kazi ingine lakina na kuambia. Na pita school fees ya raka. Can you imagine muta metoka nako na yu stress? You make men to make even suicide before before their age, early age. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate your comment and thank you for plugging in. Yeah, thank you so much, Joseph. Silas, I think you're the one to respond to that. Silas. Silas. Rigo and Achomu. Yeah, I think, uh, First and foremost, I really like what Silas has said. Yeah. I respect his opinion. Silas and I is here. Oh, ah, about Silas, the caller. The caller. Yeah. Did he say his name? Joseph. Joseph, Joseph sorry, yeah. my bad. Joseph, I agree with what he's saying, Silas. And um, one thing that is true is 
a woman like I am. That just mentioned it. I'm not going to start with you from the bottom at so that we can make it on the top. Yeah. I mean, let's be logical and realistic. True. But let's hear what Silas has to say yeah. on what they call her. I see your calls. I'll be picking them up when you come from this particular break. Let's have a response from what the caller has said. Uh, I actually agree with the Carigo in the sense that the world where you could just meet a girl and start together, it's long gone. Oh, and yeah. uh, we have to accept that. And that's even in my memos I've talked about for a man, wait until maybe you're in your 30s, you are stable, you have at least an asset because the material responsibility of marriage on a man are extremely huge. True. And uh, we can't blame women for wanting better for their kids, you know, for wanting better in life. Because for themselves. For themselves. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't do it as a man, she can do it for herself. So, like, the burden of performance for men keeps on increasing. Uh, and so should they fear marriage? As this gentleman is saying that many men out here fear getting married because of this and that. Should they fear? You, you'll notice like in the last uh, 10 years, uh, like 10 years ago, we used to see so many weddings. Even like each TV station had like a wedding show. Yes. But see those things have declined. Do you and, know what uh, we have these days? Uh -huh. Cohabiting. Yeah, we have cohabiting. Which is a very bad thing. I'm sorry. And that's my opinion. We are, but but even so, men are not marrying like uh, the same so way that they used to marry in the past. They want to enjoy the no, conjugal it's, rights it's, and the things it's that not come about with it. enjoyment. What does it mean for a man for you to marry their uh, obligations? Then mm. why are you cohabiting? And uh, yeah, the, those who cohabit maybe they can afford, but still think of the m many men like in their late twenties mm -hmm. and even in their thirties mm -hmm. who have not even cohabited or even had their first marriage. Okay, purely That's because of the economy. When the economy is not doing very well. For men, it affects them at a material level, mm -hmm. and for women, it affects them at an emotional level True. or a so social or mental. level. mental. In the sense that the economy, sh when the economy shrinks, like how our economy is right now, yes, is that uh, most men cannot afford even to date or even marry. Mm -hmm. And now, for women, you'll find that uh, the dating pool now of men has really shrunk. Yeah, that's why you see lately when people are talking about. Um, clan days or polygamy like the polygamy yeah. discussion is back in a, yeah. in a fall Dating because then the, the, yeah because the number of men who have means is really it, low. low yeah yeah so, and women can only now want to go that I way have. yeah so there's nothing wrong with a woman wanting better more with to her level there's nothing wrong. There's nothing Ama, is there wrong. a cap that no, now we're wrong? And we there's talked about hypergamy. Yeah. There's nothing wrong but, with that. Yeah. But now the problem is that uh, some women maybe lack awareness that everything has a limit. What would you tell Joseph, like for real, for real, wherever he is? Because he feels like he's in a situation whereby he's not being chosen because he's not financially. But just, they are kids. Yeah, just 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 a, a very valid point. Yes. Only that now the world is just unfair. There's ah. no way that we can help him. We just have to adopt, work hard, or ship out. Wow. Join the conversation. Yeah. I like what you've talked <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. I remember, is it last week, there was a meme going around. I remember one of my uncles sent and says, if you're still complaining about who is going to become president, if you're still complaining about the Sir Kali doing something, you're really going to wait for it. As Mr. Silas Nyanchwani has said, you need to ship up, ship up. Do uh, something with your life. Get ahead. Don't get. Don't go into the dating pool if you don't have kakitu. Am I Silas? Yeah, that's true. Because these women will thrash you. Spice. That's Double the Morgan Dance with me. I remember dancing this song at some club up on Museum Hill. But squeezy me bomolewa. If you're just joining in, that's how old I am. So you know where that club I'm talking about. If you're just joining in, this is Spice FM. The show is the adults in the room. 23 minutes past 9 o'clock. We're having a conversation with Mr. Silas Nyanchwani. There's a lady who has been on a call for quite some time. Before we get back to your question, Karigo, allow me to just find out what this lady wants. Hi, darling. Hello, how are you? Barababra. Ama sana ni kuita kwa jina ama uko anonymous. Ah ni sasa kwa majina sina shida ile nitasema ni ile iko. This is Maureen. Maureen, thank you for making time to call us from Kirinyaga. What's your question or your thought about the conversation? Fine, thank you. Let me let me first say hi to Karigo and to our guest Cyrus. Hey hey, hey hey hey, how are you doing, my dear? I'm I'm very fine, thank you. Twandie. All right. Now, uh, I get where our guest is coming from. He's an advocate for men, so obviously he's more biased towards men. But truth be told, since time immemorial, and there was also a caller, Joseph, who, who talked about women of Kitambo. 
It was not just about women of Kitambo. Even men of Kitambo, they were really dedicated. They knew their responsibilities. They were the hunters. And they were not going to hunt rabbits. They were hunting big game. Today, we don't have forests where men will go and hunt. Today, we have jobs, we have careers and all that. Eh? So it's the obligation of the man. Maybe I'm a, I am a bit old-fashioned, but I believe that is how it's supposed to be. It's the obligation of the man. Take care of your family. If this is not about... Uh, story, I think, uh, you, you want to get your money, you want to drink, you want to do or to leave everything to women. And then when the woman is mad or she leaves, or maybe even the money that you get, uh, you only bring a small bit of it that you could depend as you're looking after yourself. You just bring a small bit of it home, and then when there is trouble, you're there saying, hey, women are like this. Women are not like them. Women are just women. You're there to provide for her, to build a home with her. She has the children. They need to be there. They need to go to school. And it's a responsibility as a man to provide. And also being honest, and also bringing, and also being very open about what is happening. You cannot be pretending that your earnings, uh, maybe you, you, uh, you, okay, fine, you lose your job. You don't want to talk about it. You still want to be saying, hey, there is this, there is, it doesn't work like that. You're true, true as to much that. As, as much as Cyrus is, is biased against, uh, is there to defend men. Also, men need to step up. Men need to move with time. Back then, uh, women, they, uh, women, they don't go to gather in the fields. Also, men, uh, women go to work. So, I think even so, the other time, women are like this. No. We need to ask, ask step up. People should, uh, should move with time. Thank and, uh, you for that, just, I, I think, I also just said, I also think that, I also think that women want money. You will not tell me that they, you see a woman, she's driving her own vehicle. She's smartly dressed. She's doing all these things, and then you you are there with nothing, and you want that you, that you want to date her, and then if she bites back, then you are there saying women are bad. You are there. No, date within your circle. Yes, I agree with you. Let's date within our circles. Let's. De uh, that's what Maureen has said. I see some of your calls, but I need to answer a question that was posted on our socials. That was a memo. And when part three of one of his memos, where it talks about your life in a marriage as a man, what is that memo that has caused ripples on our socials? So why your wife's boyfriend probably gets a better deal than you? And, you know, this is something that more often than not, men do not want to accept. Yeah that their wives or their partners have a man. Silas, just s rip off the bandage. <laughs> yeah, Rip off the bandage for the men because they need to know and, uh, and understand that. We're trying to tell men to understand that uh, women cheat. Like, uh, just as men cheat, women cheat, and the latest statistics that we have uh, from America, we're almost... Thank you. You just said where? Well? From America, okay, but uh, the data is the same across uh, the world. This is Kenya. No, listen, <laughs> uh, women are almost at par with the men when it comes to cheating. And for most men, it's hard to process such a thought <laughs> that uh, your wife can cheat. And I wrote that memo to remind men that uh, it's possible. I'm not saying that uh, your, the wife is cheating, but it's possible. She's cheating, and if she's cheating, the side man, uh, the boyfriend, the office boyfriend, or the other man probably gets a better deal. And uh, you just have to look at, for example, how women worship pastors, how they treat pastors in different <laughs> churches, you know. Yeah, and, really? Uh, that's I, I, true. I, I, I'm, I'm able to... They call pastors papa, <laughs> daddy, zaddy. I've talked to... They don't call them zaddy. Which church is that? I'm not saying Can that. your purple? <laughs> <laughs> See? No. Yeah. Okay, study A. <laughs> no, I don't call a pastor Zadi uh, because as uh, Zadi is more of a uh, sponsorship, love entwined, economical name, yeah. and you know what I mean by yeah. that. That is. Uh, I know, but I have to correct. You know, we cannot. We need to separate matters of God. You know, when it comes to God, I'm very serious about. We don't joke about you that. See. I don't joke about matters of spirituality. Yeah, true. We focus on Christ and Christianity. Yeah. Christians can make mistakes, but Christ. 
focus there. Don't mix the two. Yeah. Now, well, something well, you said, I want to go back on that memo. You, it's written, why your wife's boyfriend probably gets a better deal than you. Is the reverse true? The, re the, reverse the reverse is true because we could also say because why men, your husband's girlfriend probably yeah. gets a better deal than you. Clandes and uh, you think they, they, they do? They, yeah, they do. That has that In has been sense? the case and it's well documented. Uh, you'll find. You know, let me just explain to explaining why yeah. women treat their yeah, even side even boyfriends even better. better. Mm -hmm. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes you marry for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And then once you settle in marriage, uh, you realize that I really don't like my partner. Maybe because of family, family or uh, societal reasons, you're still stuck there. But in the meantime, you say I can try something out of there. And women, for example, will cheat for, and it'll be a better place to know that, for two reasons, either emotional or financial. So you'll find maybe she's a young woman in her early 30s and there's a boss or a director in, in a company, uh, some rich man somewhere. She's dating that man and uh, they are very compatible. The, the, the wife gets to see the best side of this man and the man gets to see the best side of your wife. So when your wife comes home, she's giving you the bad side. But when she goes out there, she's giving out her best side. The other man also is probably maybe crap to his, uh, to his wife. The wife gets to see his worst Which side. Which is this best side? Because I want to see this better deal. I have, an, uh, I have a contrary opinion and I'll be sharing you. That's what I want to hear. Which is this best, best side that this wife is giving to the boyfriend? The better deal is maybe she's positive or even sexually and she's having sex with the other guy. Mm. It's kinky. You know, because the energy or sort of what you call vibes, eh? they're matching, you know. Mm -hmm. And it is something illicit and something illicit sometimes, you know, it can... The thrill, yeah, the you know, the that thrill comes the, uh, that comes with it. And then uh, now when she comes home, you know, as a man, maybe you, you remind of her mistakes, you remind her of like she's stuck in this situation. So, um, and sometimes women are not very good at hiding their emotions, like especially when they're tied with you. So you'll find like uh, she's constantly nagging you, she's cold towards you, you know. And then when she goes out there, she's having fun uh, with that man. And uh, I've seen out there like, I have some of my friends uh, who've gone out with married women and they tell me that uh, the kind of energy that those women give them is like super. Now, I'm going to give you, this is just me, yeah. as the Duchess of Ikolomani. Yeah. And I want to listen to you because I think this you can add on one of your members. See how you'll twist it. Yeah. This memo, why your wife's boyfriend probably gets a better deal than you. I feel it's a lie and it's yeah. a fallacy. Yeah. Let me tell you why I feel it's a fallacy. And it works both ways. That's why I asked you, could the reverse be true? Yeah. So whether it's a wife or the ba 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 background, and I want to put a scenario. We have a Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. and a Barbara. We have a Dennis and a Carigo mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Now, these are people, maybe Carigo is the wife, mm -hmm. and this is a, a Ben 10. Dennis mm -hmm. is a Ben 10, a, a younger man. Yeah. Yeah. Or the boyfriend, whichever, whether it's a boyfriend who's older or at par. Mm -hmm. Women have this thing mm -hmm. that they will try and be discreet mm -hmm. of their relationship. Yeah. You will not know. Yeah. They will try and cover up. It's unfortunate I'm saying this on national uh, uh, radio, but women can cheat and you will not know. Do you know that? You would not know. The, this analogy that you have, oh, they'll show their emotions. They will not show you. You know why? They're trying to protect their family. Mm. Many women stay in relationships because of their children. Granted, you're right to say, or you could be right as alleged in the statistics from America that we are at par. But do you know how many people are not caught? How many? Do you know men are caught more than women? Have you ever asked yeah. yourself why? Cover up. Mm -hmm. Paper trail. Mm -hmm. Men are a bit reckless when it comes to cheating. Mm -hmm. I'll even start with what I see in our office here. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> that, that, that level. So when it comes to people, you're saying they're getting the best. Do you know the best you'll get? It will maybe, maybe it will be intimacy. But the thing is, Carigo is hiding Dennis. Now, is that the best? But when she lives there in church, who is who? Nebuchadnezzar is the one who's seen. Barbara is working Nebuchadnezzar. Because once you become the other party, once you become the girlfriend and someone is married, when you become the side piece, you always have to hide. We are always having conversations here with Carigo and sometimes I hear they even want to go on funerals. Mm. Why? They've been <laughs> hidden. They're not getting a better deal. Who is dri who's driving that Range Rover? Who's driving that German machine? Who is whose children are going to prestigious schools? Is it the side chick or the main chick? So who is getting a better deal? The better deal you're getting is just physical intimacy. And if we are honest with you, it fizzles away. 
when the thrill is over, Karigo, what will happen? So you'll get another one. When the, and, and if we are honest, this thing of always assuming that the girlfriend and this, uh, the girlfriend or the boyfriend is getting a I don't think so. This is why women are looking for recognitions. Someone can say, I've dated you. Sellers have dated you for two years. Why are you not, why are you not showing me your friends? Because they want to be exposed because they believe Karigo is being exposed as the wife. So when it comes to a better deal, I beg to differ. The better deal comes into the small, small, yani, mafituza kwanguka breadcrumbs you're the one who's being taken out fine you'll be taken to that local bar do you know where mama goes she goes on holiday yeah, if, we, if we are honest let's be honest yeah if you're the side uh, you're the boyfriend of this man you think she wants to be seen at uh, she will hide you she'll tell you go ahead i'll come back mm. but the man you walk even if he's walking two steps you'll know those two are together but the moment the relationship is illicit there's nothing good you're getting out of it if we are very honest both ways well well that's um uh, if you think about it, just that, that's my no, analogy. You, you, you're correct, but you see, that's uh, from a female point of view. Yes, so there's nothing, even a and man. Uh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Listen, and uh, the memo addresses the issue of how you relate in the house. And you find that s most marriages can really be very toxic. True. Couples don't talk. Some, some. Let's see some. Uh, let's see some. Uh, ah, there's, uh, many, many actually thrive. Eh? Yes. But now we are focusing on those that, are you know, the good marriages yes. are good in their own mm. way. And um, so you'll find that how, for example, if I'm married to you and you have an arrangement out there and it's working very well, now at the background, I become an inconvenience. So while well, we might be living in that big house together, we, we might be driving those big cars, but we're not relating very well. It's very toxic there. But when you go out there with the, um, with the other man, remember the other man could be married there. Eh? Yes. You get to show each other your good sides. Like uh, you can laugh, you know, you can flirt, you can, you can have fun. But, do you know but the you moment you go home, and just I'm coming to a conclusion. Eh? But when you go home as a woman, you're not happy at home. And when you're not happy at home, uh, I think most women cannot pretend. And there's something, and I think there's even a TED Talk Twitter. When women cheat, they cheat to leave a relationship on their way out. A woman can only stick around, maybe if the man has means, and uh, she knows that she can't get a better deal materially out there. So she might want to be discreet and stick around. But uh, that notion that women are not, are not being caught, then you've not visited Milimani law courts and uh, where, where, where people are no. divorcing and see the number of women who are being divorced because they were caught. Now, now, now you're using the analogy where you were saying that when a woman brings out on a thing, the, the, when a man brings out an issue, women defend it with even you. You see, even you, you're not bringing that analogy. Mm. No. So <laughs> now I want to remind you, yeah. it's just a defense. So we should no, never it, say it, it's a tactic. It's, it's, so, not, it's, uh, it's not about defense. Those 99 tactics. We're talking about uh, a very singular issue about yeah. how within marriage people try to thrive. A man we love is a side dish mm -hmm. and of course and I would love to, to disagree with you that sometimes uh, women who are being flown to the coast for those holidays you're talking about women who are being treated better sometimes uh, the, the mistresses the mistresses are being treated better than even the wives. Yeah. No, and I'm sure I, you I all I know I don't, I don't wives who really suffer. Yeah, because the, the men are concentrating but, on. But my question is, is it a case? Uh, can we say it's a case by case scenario? Because yes, you are right. I don't uh, disapprove that there could it's be a it. man or a woman they are benefiting from that particular affair and being treated better. But it's still illicit, so you're not getting. No, it's tax. illicit. We're not trying to, ap to approve like it's the right thing to no, do. No, no, no. That's that, uh. that is not. That's not even the topic of the conversation. Mm -hmm. That the fact that they are doing better. Uh -huh. You feel the mistresses, the boy toys. The boyfriends of the wives are doing better than the main man. That's what you're saying? Yeah. The word better there is used in a, in a relative sense. Okay. Let's yeah. pick this call then. Mm -hmm. Hello, Spice. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Would you like to stay anonymous or would you like me to say your name? Just say my name. Hi, Amos. What's your question or what are your comment about this? <clears throat> Allow me to give two Three very quick comments. Yes, go ahead. Number one, <clears throat> it's not true that women have been suppressed over the years. I think it's a, it's a, it's a wrong notion. Women only belonged to where they belonged. But those who came out, and we go back to history, talk about Morangit from Kisi, 
talk about Mekatiri wa Menza from Griyama when they came out men gave them even the right to lead them to war anyway that's just by the way uh, but that's now, that community not all communities well if these other women did not come out I, I don't know how they expected to be given the chance to lead <coughs> but uh, I want to take issue with uh, what I've heard that uh, women take care of their parents more I think it is very wrong. Men stay with their parents all the time and they provide what I may describe as the basic, all the main needs in that family. This little comes only once with some, some bread here and some dress and they think they have done out. In fact, if you went back and uh, assessed what these men are doing with their parents from a day-to-day -day basis, you would actually disabuse that. Then uh, I have uh, this... I still beg to differ, but you are allowed to have that opinion. <laughs> okay, okay. Because I was talking from experience, but, but yes, you're allowed because you're coming from a place of what you know, and I was talking about from a place of what I know, and I respect <laughs> that. Yes, the other one? In the same way, I respect you as... Okay, women are talking about equality in the political, economic, and social sphere. So then I wonder why they turn around and say, now, if you are not providing, I'm moving away. You know, I'm, 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 I'm looking for somebody who can take care of me. So I, I really don't understand how... Almost, but you're the man. Together. You're the man, Baba. You're the king of this house. Does the word man... Hey, but to, provide, to provide for us. Does the word man, men, at any point mean provider? Finally, <laughs> I also think that um, it's true that some women are only being unreasonable because they don't want to provide even what they, what they are able to provide just because men are there. But at the same time, we also have this problem with men. I also want to be fair. Somebody goes, picks somebody's daughter who has not even completed school or who has just completed school but, but does not allow this small girl to turn around and maybe realize their ability to build themselves economically. A memoir. And then, when this girl is now demanding as a wife, I want this, I want that, still they want to complain. So as you can see, I've touched the both, uh, both sides. You have tried, thank but you. Uh, thank you for that, sir. <laughs> Hello, Spice. Hello, Spice. Hello. How are you, sir? Are you staying anonymous or would you like me to call your name? Just send my name today. I, I, I give you permission. Hi, Geoffrey. What are your thoughts about the conversation? Okay, I want to support my brother who is in the studio. Yes, go ahead. There are, there are, there are some many that are trying to, 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 to pretend. Okay, Barbara. Yes. Who your bro, Liku, and Angelia? Kuhusu wanu wani wanawake kutiji, muka sema ni Amerika peka kesi Kenya. Juzi, ulikuwa na mrembo wapa wanaitua nani hile masikini hile wafaya wakisi wa Nairobi ya nini. Ok, nimesao jina. Makoha. Ehe, ulikuwa na ya tani. Kwa batimbea chumangu njizima sikuweza kupigia juzi. Sasa, kuna suri mimi sema kwa nikuwa de Nairobi ya nini. Uyu mrembo wameolewa na akawa na mpangu wa kandu na mpangu wa kandu wakawa na wamuza na mtoto na eje na mpangu wa kandu imaji likuwa naanda kumulipia ma, mahari ma, marapili. Ushasikia? Nisi ni vitu ufanyika jamani Joffrey. Hata wanaome kuna ha? sasa wajue lazima tuuze gazeti. Ha nisikiza vizuri. Ha? Sasa nilishanta mwanzo mrembo alikuja akaandikwa safari Nairobi na alikuwa hajawahi panda flight kama kama Geoffrey simu yake akadanganya mume wake kwamba anaenda 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 badhi ya ya, ya taski yake na mwanamume akamsapoza aka akampa aka support akaenda nini kwenye hiyo ni kwenye badhi uongo akaenda Nairobi akakaa kwenye zile siku tatu ikawa mwishowe mahari na kwenda kulipwa controversial one mara ya pili Sasa wako wanawake wako kila pali wadanganyifu na pia wanaume 
na pia wazazi ya. pia wazazi wengine ni wadanganyifu kwa sababu kwa nini wanachukua mahari mara mbili hiyo tabia mbaya eh hiyo ni misingi mibaya sana kwa mimi sasa mengi wanaposema naongea ukweli na nanatetea na, na, wanaume kweli amewatetea <laughs> nyote asante hello spice hello how are you sir please raise your voice i like to hear you better Jamani si kusiki I can't hear you my dear Hello Yes what's Hello. your name And akusikia what's your Hello. name where are you calling from And do me a favor reduce the volume of your radio or your gadget so that Silas can hear you better Nataka hii mnanisikia poa Proceed Hello Yes Hi. proceed Ni kona best yangu hapa mi mi have a question I have a question Head eh, My friend my friend is here Eh she met this girl okay she's beautiful she's all that a yeah. question is the friend a woman or a man a man a man ah yeah that's how you dem we you dem eh uh, boy by the who provide kila kitu as much as the same providing to give the five piece providing protecting all that he does all that but that's a boy when the job eh atatoka atatoka job jioni huyu dem hata hajapika kitu hakuna kitu amefanya venye nyumba ile ya tu asubuhi ndio atapata huyu dem amekatua hapo akingoja hiyo dem aindangi job hakuna kitu weko kwa nyumba vitu za kupika ziko kila kitu iko kila kitu iko hii you say la sako hapo bari yako say la ndio unanisikia eh nakusikia nakusikia kabisa haya <laughs> na mimi nauliza kweli alikuwa amehayampishi Amecha instructions za upishi. Hapana, hapana. Now, now let me even get into details. Kutana nayo. Haya. Huyu boy, boy alimitu you dem by the vizuri sana and eh, apparently when they met this 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 girl was all showy oh venye anaweza fanya, oh venye anaweza fanya. Mimi nimejaribu kuongea naye nikijaribu kumwambia by the way ni scam. That's my opinion personally but me na hope sai la sakono opinion maybe even better than i have but as much as anafikiria atamuoa and yet she cannot do this simple simple things uh, i sai la sa woni kama hiyo ni red flag kwa sababu kama kila kitu kiko kwa nyumba ume provide amwache sai sai kama uko naye amwache sai sai ah umesikia burudi tena rudi tu tena na nguvu tu eh sai sai tu am drop bas Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why does he sound like he was asking for him? So, but even me, I would say drop her. Yeah. I would say drop her. However, mm -hmm. Silas, you know, Kwani men have employed women to replace the mama fuas. I think that's, that, that's not the question here. The question is... Uh, Ameka the whole... Aliambiwa Kenya atafanya. Ama it should come automatically for a woman. It should come automatically. Oh, and, oh. You know, the same way that you expect <laughs> men to perform, to provide to. Also, men have certain expectations on women. Okay, th this is the thing. Thank you, Silas, was saying that yeah. men have certain expectations. <laughs> yeah. Do you articulate this expectation to women? And I'm asking very genuinely. Because you see this, uh, this gentleman who has narrated this story. Mm. I have two colleagues. Two. Mm. Who narrated this similar story? It's it true. It's yes, far too I, common. I, I, and they're telling me, Barbara discussed it on the show, and I'm thinking, yeah. are you crazy even you? One, I always say this on the show, Silas, and maybe you need to put a memo. Can you stop doing wifely duties, husband as a girlfriend? As a girlfriend. I'm your girlfriend, Silas. I am not yeah. going to wash your clothes. I'm telling you, I will not wash your clothes. I'm your wife. I'll even wash your underwear. I'm telling you, I even wash your back. I'm a, as a girlfriend, I will not do I'm it. I'm a Barbara. Maybe for that's the problem. Maybe for Kina we, Silas, that's the wife material. And then there are women out here. Like I have Silas seen. Banyagali, <laughs> and I, no, no, <laughs> Silas, and I have seen women <laughs> who are just mere girlfriends doing yeah. all these things, cooking, cleaning, doing, and then yeah. they are left for Akarigo, yeah. who does nothing. True or false? Mm. True. That's what I'm saying. Have you articulated your expectation? Have you told her, I'm looking at a future for you? Or you're just expecting sitting her? Please also, men, even you people are funny. You're funny. Some of these problems you bring for yourself. Don't you think so? It's true. And that's why I said, like, uh, as a man, the, 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 the greatest de decision you can ever make in life mm -hmm. is the man you're marrying. And if from the word go, you notice, like, this woman is not aligned to your vision or what you want, yes. then you want to cut her off 
immediately. Mm. Because the thing with now our friend, like the scenario has given us, the man already knows that this woman is lazy. He can for see example, it. You know. And then the man is just goes still ahead and pregnant her. Thank you. Start having a and family. Then after and then two years, he's going to start complaining. After two years now, he's going to complain. And that's another thing, Sai. She does a kujile. That's yeah. another thing that I want you to address. Yeah. The fathers, mm -hmm. the men who have daughters, the fathers of daughters. Yeah. Because you've said one very important thing. Mm -hmm. He will see her. And then he'll acknowledge that she doesn't have the wife material skills, but then he'll still go ahead and impregnate her. Yeah. And then now, God has it, she gives birth to a daughter. Yeah. That's a memo. Yeah. That's a cycle. Mm -hmm. That's a memo he has, yeah. the father's daughters. Mm -hmm. What are you telling the fathers? Because, Silas, we have very many deadbeat dads out here. Let's be that's true that's and that's honest. That's true. We have men who are not taking any responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And we all know the father-daughter, mother-son relationships. Mm -hmm. What's your memo for them? For yeah, I have a memo, like the new book, I have a memo that talks about for men, if you have a daughter, that's like the greatest responsibility you'll ever have on how you're going to, to raise her. Uh, we raise daughters and sons a bit differently. Yes. But as a father of a daughter, I just want to tell her to be responsible and tell her to be confident because confidence, I think, is the best life skill you can give your children. Because when you are confident, you will know how to navigate around life. And also the aspect of love and responsibility. I mm. mean, if, if my son is dating, I'll teach him how to treat a lady nicely, you know, to respect the lady, to love, to love her, you know. If it's my daughter, I'll tell her that your boyfriend will have certain expectations. But uh, these expectations, they are contingent to what the man is doing. Like the man has to perform, provide and do ABCD so yes. that you can do ABCD so that it's not a one-sided relationship. Yeah. Uh, but the problem we have now is that... Uh, modern marriages are premised on love and love is a very flimsy thing to base marriage on so you find like this man genuinely loves this girl this girl genuinely loves this man but now she's not willing to sacrifice uh, and do what the man wants so that's where that, that, that's the problem that we have mm. so we need to go back to a time when if it's marriage people mm. need to marry for practical and pragmatic reasons uh, at as, as yeah. well as, uh, there's something I want to plug in and also what she said. Yeah. One, you've mentioned, I think twice, you're a father yeah. of a daughter. I've yeah. heard that. Mm -hmm. This gentleman who's called was complaining about the girlfriend not preparing meals for him and he left. So the aspect of laziness comes to play. You as a parent, what, uh, what do you feel that we have failed as parents, because I'm a parent and many other people, mm -hmm. in raising the girl child? Because based on this conversation, how people are talking, and even how you are responding, you feel that there, there are certain responsibilities. As you said, and also someone said, uh, two callers, it needs to come automatic. You think we have failed, or some of our parents have failed in how they raise children. Because another person would say, Mama ya kufundisha, or you should have been taught at home. But she's coming from a place of where Karigo was asking, did this, ma did this man think he was hiring a maid? Yeah, yeah. And another person would think that is automatic. Does that we stem are, through how we were we, raised? Yeah, we were. We, we, we or how that girl has ra been raised? If you grew up in a middle class family, it means you had uh, a maid who was doing the job for you. So you feel like most educated Kenya, we get into relationship or even uh, we go about our lives in a very bossy way. We have a very bossy attitude. We, we just expect like there's someone to clean after us. And that's what happens when you grow, when you have a house self at, a ho at home and you're not, be, you're not taught those uh, simple things. Because for me, when I hear adults arguing like, oh, dishes, like, yeah, I'm like, what's that about? Seriously. I so we should share. We should I'm share. Not, not, share, to be share not even sometimes sharing Dutchess. And I would like you to really touch on this. It, we, we've had scenarios like during COVID times yeah. where the man would um, be working from home yeah. and the lady is working from home. Yeah. But then now the man would not pick up after himself because he's used to the woman picking up after him. And there's been a whole debate on Twitter about it in the past 24, 48 hours about the man-child. The man-child who can easily pick up after himself, but doesn't. Why? Because there's a presence of a woman there. I think in most Kenyan uh, homes, especially middle-class homes, 
the house help really complicates things in a okay. family setup because now for a woman you've outsourced your wife responsibility to the to the <laughs> maid. My services, no, no, listen, my listen. duties. It's yeah, okay, just you've uh, outsourced them to the to the maid. <laughs> so the man now is trying. What, what no, does listen, that even listen. mean, No, I'm saying like if you let, let's say I'm married to you, yes. we'll probably have a uh, house help yes. most so of the time. So let's assume right? I'm your house help. Yeah. So. Sure. As a man, you know, now <laughs> you're operating in this no man's land because if you come and you find me in the kitchen and, uh, you know, a man, for all the things that we do in a marriage, mm -hmm. at the very least, there is that element of, we're still Africans after all. Eh? Yes. Yes. So you'll find that as a man, you really don't know how to negotiate with him or to navigate around the house because uh, the wife, for example, does not want you to interact with the house help. Most wives will not be very comfortable if they find you like... Do you energy. want to interact with the house help? You sell us. Yeah. No, okay. I don't. I would love to have mm. a so good domestic relationship. Like you, you live together. Like I want to, I can ask for a cup of water from yes. her. I can tell her to all my food eh? mm -hmm. to be served, you see. So for most men, I think uh, there is that complication where you really don't know what to do and how far you can go. You do want to go wash the dishes. You want, But I think those are... Uh, Non-issues. Non-issues. Two adults can... Uh, can find a, a better way of dealing with that other than arguing about it. Yeah. And we can solve all these things during courtship. You can know the kind of wife or the kind of husband that uh, you're taking up. And that's another thing because, you know, you've written the memoirs of your life in marriage. And, you know, we've had this conversation with the Duchess and Miriam off air yeah. where we've talked about people who get married and then two months later, they are filing for separation and divorce. Yeah. Are men courting women anymore? Because I must be courted. Are it's, men courting women anymore happening. in 2022? It's not happening and we're paying a very and high why? price. And why are, we not, why are men not courting yes. women? What happened? Are we going to still stick on the word of economy? No, no, no. Because no. that has been the language. Oh, there's no money. All oh, women are so expensive. Oh, they have no. standards. What has happened? You know, Kitambo... Uh -huh. This might sound controversial to many people, but it's really true, eh? Most men married in order to access sex. Yes. And most women married in order to access material stability. Mm -hmm. Now, women <laughs> have money and they, they can do, they can They are working hard, much. yes. And for man, like a tumble for a man to access sex, it's like 85% of the men, it's really, even right now, it's very difficult to access sex. Yes, it's always been. It's always been, it's you know. You know what I mean? Man, yes. yeah, some but, have to pay for but, it. Yeah. But, uh, but right now, any man, you can get sex anytime you want. You can go to Tinder. Right now, I can walk into the club in Maradaima and I can go home with a woman if I want, you know. So, what this means is that we've lowered the, the standards. Standard. Oh, that's what has happened. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Both of no, us. Both that's, genders are That's what right. happens with capitalism. No, I think it's capitalism our fault. Capitalism and the no, sexual it's our, revolution. It's, it's, it's the woman's fault there. We've become too cheap. It's the woman's fault. No, but you, you've we can't blame the man that we've become too cheap. You've yeah. not become cheap because of the women. But it's because like capitalism, that's yes, how capitalism yeah. works. But yeah. we cannot yeah. blame the man for that. Yeah. We also have to take responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. Why are you being cheap swungward uh, uh, aimlessly? I don't disagree. You're being I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've like lowered our standards. We've lo but we're being cheap swungward because <laughs> first of all, there are no desirable men to like uh, the, there is not enough desirable men out there to go out with. So we need to so give back more or what? what? What's happening? We, we have to make the economy work. Like it's a whole lot of like uh, problems. You have to make the economy work. And um, for example, women have to be trained maybe to have how to manage the expectations. Mm. Because you find like if a woman at the top, you also want men at the top. Yes. But men at the top, they are few. They, they are few and also they're not loyal because they have so many options. Because they believe when they were broke, they yeah. were told to be single. Now they have money. Yeah. They feel that can spread it out no, and, uh, and have a variety. And have a variety. Th 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 that's true. But also the question of alphas, like the men at the top, the 5 or 10% that every woman wants, those ones, they're not very. So we have to tell women now, like, to calm down, kidogo, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying, like, coming down, no, you are, you are you. compromising your standards. <laughs> it's just to be realistic, like, you're not going to get, uh, for example, a man who's a 10, when as a woman, maybe you are a 6 or you are a 5. 
Like it's, it's a question just of being reasonable. At least for men, we know this. Yeah. I like what this gentleman has said, and I need to bring him back hey, for those who are hey, making noise hey, online. Hey, ah, we've hey. seen you. We love you. Thank you so much, Silas, for making time to come. Yeah. And yes, we cannot finish all your memos. They are one thirty-five. We have to come back. Uh, we are going to sample he some of them and also back. have better and bigger conversations on sure. this spice.